What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, you know, I don't really have a name for this channel other than my name. Um, why don't you guys give me some ideas on what I might should call it. Um, some of the guys have uh, said I should call it Walter Racecraft because that's the name of my business. Um, some guys have said, uh, so I, I have a little uh, blog on my website uh, called Stories from a Small Garage. Uh, and some guys have said maybe do something like that. So, but yeah, anyways, um, just uh, if you got any ideas, any good ideas, let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear, uh, hear some different thoughts. So. so tonight, or this week, over the course of this week, my hope is uh, to get the new uh, get the new rear end in uh, the Camaro. So the rear end in the car right now is a Mosier 9 inch. Um, it's uh, a stock width uh, housing. It's got um, does have some a bunch of strange guts in it. It's got a set of 40 spline axles. Uh, and it's fairly indestructible, but it doesn't have a back brace on the rear uh, on the housing itself. And um, the lower co control arm brackets could be longer so that I could get a little bit better anti-squat out of the thing. And so I kind of figured that while I was doing this that I would do a narrowed uh, housing and um, that way that I could get a, a deeper dish wheel on it. So <clears throat> I think uh, I went as narrow as I could without doing, you know, inboarding the uh, control arm brackets. Um, and so that will reduce the length of the axles, which will make them even stronger, which 40 spline, I doubt I would ever have a problem with them. Uh, and uh, uh, then also uh, the back bracing, so it's stronger again. So this is the new housing. It's by Trick Chassis. Um, and I had them, like I said, I had them put the super long lower control arm brackets on. I think there, there's 15 holes on there for adjustability. Um, I'm not really sure how much longer they are than the factor than the ones I have on the car, which are like a BMR add-on deal uh, that I welded onto the housing. So, but of course I'll retain the torque arm and the uh, panhard rod, and I've got uh, factory location springs uh, still, or at least the ability to do that. A um, couple of things I'm going to add to the housing, um, maybe later this week. Uh, hard to say. Uh, but I want to put some kind of a, uh, some kind of maybe tubular tabs or something in, in this area uh, for, um, uh, for some tie down points, uh, just make it a little bit easier. Um, and then I got to get, uh, I've got an anti, a, a bigger anti roll bar that I'm going to put in the car. So the tabs for that will go on as well. Um, and when I get the anti-roll bar in, I may uh, look at uh, maybe putting, or like relocating the shocks uh, to do like a true coilover uh, behind the axle. But it's going to get in the way of the panhard rod, and I'm not sure I want to open that can of worms. So the classes I'm trying to fit in uh, require a stock uh, rear suspension. And in order to go and do like a... Uh, um, a coilover on one of these uh, behind the axle you really need to put a like a wishbone or something on there uh, for locating the axle and um, that w a wishbone will will push me out of the classes that I, I want to stay in so especially with uh, with drag week and the other drag and drive events <clears throat> so the car is uh, legal for super street um, and they will not allow a wishbone in Super Street. So, and that's, and I don't want to get pushed into, uh, what would it be? Um, modified, I think. Um, although, yeah, because modified doesn't have a small block and big block class. So if I was going to do uh, modified, I would end up uh, in with uh, NA small blocks and NA big blocks. Um, and I really want to stick with the small block. So, uh, yeah, so I've got a few things to measure and uh, pre-assemble. So I'm going to get going on that this evening um, so that I can, I need to measure for wheels. Uh, I'm hoping that I can order a set of street wheels this evening after I take the measurements. 
and uh, possibly um, possibly have those before I'm done with making this video so that you guys can see so that'll be the end you know the end product I'm hoping that the rear end will be in the car and that I'll have the street wheels and I can mount the the 29 and a half inch tall street tires that I've got for it um, and then that'll be uh, kind of the conclusion of the video so So the new housing was ordered three inches each side narrower than a stock housing. And <clears throat> I would love to just trust that it's exactly correct, but my experience is that when you start trusting everybody else to make sure that they did their job right, you're going to end up with bigger problems. So I am going to measure this best I can to compare the new one. I think if I go to the inside of the backing plate, the inside of the backing plate, that should give me a pretty good idea. That's 56 and 38. Okay, so <clears throat> the stock width is 56 3 8 inches. I'm using the same brakes. I'm using the same exact offset on the uh, on the axle because they're both strange 40 spline. So there's no reason why I can't take the backing plates off of this rear, put them on this, measure, and get us a good uh, indication of what we need. Theoretically, this should be 50 and 3 8, but I want to confirm because, well, reasons. and five eighths so that actually ends up being five and a half inches um, narrower than the rear that's in it <clears throat> this is why we measure because if I had assumed it was six inches then we'd be in a different scenario altogether so 
making sure. Yep. Okay. So <clears throat> the current Mickey Thompson wheels that I have on the car right now are a, um, a 15 by 10 with six and a half inches of backspace. So um, to get wheels that will put the tire in the exact same spot in the wheel well, which is what I want, I like where the tire is, then I will need to take five and a half and divide it by two, which is two and three quarter inch, uh, take six and a half minus two and three quarter, which ends up being 3.75 inches. Three and three quarter inches is not a common backspacing for most drag wheels. So I am going to get a four inch backspacing wheel with, and probably run a quarter inch spacer, which is perfectly acceptable. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I'll do. So <clears throat> now that also means, all right, so if I, I'm gonna get a 15 by eight with, um, for the street wheels. Uh, so if we we're gonna run a 15 by eight, <clears throat> so factory, we would have probably done like a five or five and a half, say five and a half inch backspacing to get the tire under the wheel well far enough that, cause it's a tall tire. So we wanna make sure that um, we're not scraping on the inside of the wheel well. So five, we'll call it five and a half, minus 2.75, That'll give us 2.75. Um, so <clears throat> again, two and three quarter inches, not really a common uh, deal, but if I'm gonna run a quarter inch spacer, then that will keep, um, that'll keep everything happy. And I can run a wheel with two and a half inches of backspacing. <clears throat> as far as I'm aware, there isn't um, a whole lot of 15 by 8 with two and a half inches of backspacing available on the market. Um, those aero wheels that we put on the Falcon, those kind of roundy round wheels, do offer something like that. Um, so I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a set of those and then uh, make them work happy with the uh, 5 8 shank style uh, wheel stud that we run on this. Uh, and Hopefully it'll work out fine. Those wheels are cheap enough. I think it will be fine for an experiment. So, <clears throat> so that's the next step. I got to order some wheels. So, good deal. Okay, so I kind of lied. Uh, the next step will actually be to get the bearings onto uh, the axles so that um, we can start <coughs> doing some assembly on, uh, on the car. So we'll go ahead and get these in there. <coughs> these are 40 spline axle from Strange. They are, um, these ones are gun drilled. So they've got a 5 8 hole uh, that's like rifle drilled all the way down the shaft. Um, and it takes out some weight uh, as well as having their ultra lightweight flange. <clears throat> these are, uh, it's a little bit more spendy to do it this way, but it seems to be um, a good way to lose a couple of pounds per axle shaft. I think um, it's one pound per foot uh, on the uh, rifling, so that's probably two pounds. And then they say it's like one and a half pounds for the ultra lightweight flange. So three and a half pounds, so seven pounds overall. Uh, less than um, uh, like a, a standard solid one. The other thing is, is that rifle drilling makes these into kind of like a like a torsion spring, so they have a little bit of a um, give and relax to them. Um, so more like what you would see on, um, yeah, I guess a, a torsion spring, like a, like the front end of a. Uh, four-wheel drive Silverado or uh, old Mopar or something like that. Um, whereas the solid ones, uh, they have a tendency to uh, get a little bit of memory in them um, yeah, the more and more you beat on them. So now 40 spline axle, I mean, this is 
almost pro mod stuff. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't call it pro mod stuff, but it definitely is getting up close to that. Um, so honestly, we'll probably never have a problem out of these. So the biggest thing is, is just keeping an eye on the bearings because they are kind of small since they have such a big ID and a relatively small OD because I use a standard new style for nine inch end on the, on the housing. So anyways, so the kit comes with the axles uh, and bearing and then these two rings. This ring is a spacer and it's got a direction to it like a radius and that radius matches up with the radius on the axle here and that actually just slides on like that. And then the next bit would be the bearing, um, the O-ring on the bearing is offset. Uh, the O-ring goes biased to the outside of the housing. So put that on like that. And then I've got a wedding ring uh, that will go on to keep the bearing from backing off. So now these are press fit, so we'll have to put them in the press and get them on. Last night I was able to get the axles all situated with uh, the bearings and the wedding rings uh, pressed in. Um, tonight is going to be about getting the, um, I got to get the rear end out. I'm going to go ahead and pull the old one. Uh, I can't think of a good reason not to. So um, that's the next step. I did get a set of wheels ordered uh, last night, like I said I would. Um, so it looks like the street wheels will be here tomorrow which I'm super excited about um, and then the race wheels well they're like everything else four to six or eight weeks or something like that so my hope was to get those ordered so that we don't have any problems with being able to get them before we're hoping to go race again in April so um, I mean that's gosh four months away I hope that's plenty of time but you just never know so anyways, uh, let's get the rear end out of this thing. All right, well, we got it out. The um, The next steps on this is gonna be, I'm gonna take the center section out of this because it's got a, uh, a 370 gear in it and I think I'm gonna stick with that. Um, I am gonna take the wheel studs off of these axles because they're a two inch. Um, and the wheel studs that uh, <clears throat> I got with the axles from Trick Chassis are like the, the strangest like standard style uh, wheel studs and I want to run chromoly studs on this so um, so kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul I'm gonna end up putting uh, the brakes uh, that were on the car on this I, I do have a brand new set of brakes but um, and what I'll probably end up doing truthfully is taking the rotors and the new pads out of the brakes that I got and uh, putting them on this rear end and then so the plan for the the uh, the old rear end is actually to go in my dad's car 
Um, so what I'll do is I'll put the rotors, which are not in bad shape, uh, and um, the fresh calipers. Uh, I'll get them a fresh set of pads. Um, so and that'll all go on here uh, with uh, with no problem. So there's no uh, real wear concerns on uh, the other brakes uh, on any of the components. So I'll kind of mix and match a set, um, mainly because I don't feel like opening that box, <laughs> as dumb as it sounds, um, but I don't really have a good reason to. And if I do it this way, then I don't have to take the brake uh, calipers off of the car and have to bleed brakes. So actually, let me show you something here. So the brake line on this car is got a T right up there and focus. Uh, and it has um, an individual leg that goes to each side um, and then uh, the caliper uh, can be taken off of the rear axle and um, then the axle can come out without having to uh, do um, uh, break the, the brake lines open. So um, a lot of race cars are set up this way. Um, I don't think it's anything new. Uh, I did this several years ago now, uh, and I, trust me, it's been awesome uh, to be able to take the rear axle out of this car without opening those brake lines. All right, so I've got one of these thread locker gaskets for this. I've used these in the past, and they work pretty good, and they're supposed to be somewhat reusable. They've got like a steel core. Um, I'm noticing a little bit of like rough this right here so I'm going to just help this out a little bit with a little bit of ultra black so that <clears throat> we don't have any leaky leakies because it was leaking on the other one. So we're back out in the shop for, uh, well, the third night this week. i uh, been pretty fortunate to be able to get back out here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a couple add-ons onto uh, the rear end housing before we install it. Um, so I'm uh, going to do some tie down uh, points and then also a, uh, um, a jack point uh, on the bottom. Everything on the rear that we wanted to the tie down straps and the jack uh, point are on the uh, rear so uh, the only thing left to do really is to go ahead and install the darn thing so let's get after it
All right, it's in, guys. I got the, uh, you can see the tie down points there for uh, tying the car down in the trailer. And you can see how well the jack point's working as well. So I got to nut and bolt this thing yet, but <clears throat> it is in the car. So I uh, got a few more projects coming up. Um, Anti-roll bar install, uh, as well as uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. Let's see, parachute. I want to redo the mount for that. And then, um, oh, I'm sure there's a bunch of other things I want to do. But anyways, this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty excited about it. So, um, I'm hoping the, hoping the street wheels will be here soon. So, oh, you can see lower control arm brackets are much, much longer uh, now. So, that's, uh, right now it's sitting, I think, uh, a quarter of an inch lower than uh, the, ori the original set of BMR brackets that I had on there. I've got two more holes to go uh, below that. So, I am not looking for a lot of separation out of this car. That's not how a slick tire clutch car type type deal type tends to want to. Yeah, I can't get the words out of my mouth. Big <sighs> shift slick tired cars tend to like to either leave fairly even or even squat a little bit, and that's for wheel speed. So, anyways, um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and end it off here. Um, I'm not sure if the wheels are going to make it tomorrow and I'm just kidding. They ended up showing up yesterday and I decided to go ahead and get them on there so that we could see what they're looking at. So anyway, so this is a 15 by eight, uh, with uh, three inches of back spacing. And then I'm running a 265 70 15 tire, which is a, like a 29 and a half inch tall, like SUV tire. So I'm really excited about this, uh, uh, the way this thing fits um, it seems to, to look pretty good um, and it it pulled the tire a little bit further in towards the inside of the wheel tub uh, so because I was all always having problems with it rubbing right up in here and now it's further in so it should be uh, it should it should work a whole lot better now get you guys over here so you can see a little better but yeah this is uh, this is super exciting. I also got word that the race wheels are actually already on their way, which I did not expect at all. That was supposed to be another like two months or something like that. And apparently uh, the manufacturer had what they needed. So <clears throat> I'm hoping that uh, those will be on a video soon. Anyways, um, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, thanks again for stopping by and We'll see you on the next video.